Hey nerds, Todd Sim is coming back at you with a little more Tomation. Today I want to introduce you to a product you may or may not be familiar with. Uh, it's a brand called Ruckus. Um, they started out as just wireless a while back. Um, like a lot of the wireless providers they got, uh, or OEMs, got bought out by a much larger uh, company. And Ruckus was bought out by Comscope. So some people might think, oh, it's Comscope. Some people might say Ruckus. Uh, whatever you want to say. Uh, it's just the, the wireless and the, the wired products from Comscope Ruckus. Uh, I do want to give a special shout out to Double D, Daryl DeRocha, uh, who uh, hooked me up with the server, uh, the equipment to be able to do these videos for you. So I uh, really appreciate the support there, Double D. Uh, let's just jump right into it. So over here, you're going to have to have access uh, to a Ruckus controller. Now, specifically, I'm working on the Virtual Smart Zone High Scale. Um, they call it the VSZ for Virtual Smart Zone. And you're going to have to have a login uh, for the Virtual Smart Zone. The, the way that it works with the token, you can't just assign tokens. Uh, it uses a username and a password in order to generate a temporary token for you to be able to run the API call. So if you have access to the virtual smart zone, uh, just make sure that you know, you're listed under the administration here as one of the administrators, uh, and then you're going to be able to um, get access. So one thing that I do want to show you is the, the way that, that Ruckus has gone about their APIs is a little different as far as the terminology uh, than what you might be used to. Uh, so what I do want to show you uh, is at least how to look up and get information on your current version and the API call. So if you'll go into administration, right? so everyone should be starting here at the dashboard. Your dashboard might not look like mine if it's still defaulted. Uh, it's actually set to this mode. Uh, I've got it set up for ball, but if you default to map, when it comes up, it might show you some Google map of where you are or what's going on with it. That doesn't really matter. Uh, what you do want to do is go to administration and then from administration, you can see underneath the help, there's the rest APIs. Now, when you click inside your virtual smart zone, this is going to bring you to your version of virtual smart zone, which is really helpful because if you're doing a Google search or something for it, you'll go in here and you'll look at it and it might be an API reference guide for version three or four or five, which doesn't really help you if you're on six. Um, as you can see, there's a bunch of different uh, API versions and smart zone versions. Uh, this one is only listing my smart zone version. That's the SZ here. And then here are the API versions that are applicable um, to this particular version of the smart zone. Okay, so uh, I'll put, uh, I can't put this link in because this is going straight to mine, but inside the notes down below, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll put a link to how to get to an API document or at least how to, to look for it on the Comscope Ruckus webpage. So uh, now that that's done, that's pretty much all we're going to do inside the virtual smart zone. Uh, you should have your own account underneath administration, as I said before. Uh, and once you have a username or password, that's going to enable you to be able to get access uh, via the API. So with the code, just to show you real quick, I'm, I have all of this in my, my GitHub underneath the Ruckus section of Tautomation. Um, this is the requirements.txt. There's not that many plugins or packages that you're going to need to install for this one. Uh, I like ice cream. Ice cream is what I use to uh, troubleshoot and debug or just, you know, look at what the output is. Uh, I find it works way better than, you know, say the print. Uh, some people like pretty print, uh, which formats it. I like pretty print, but I prefer ice cream now. Uh, Python decouple. This is how I hide my information and how I import it uh, using a .env file. I've got another video on it. You should be able to just uh, pick it up and go. And then, uh, of course, request. Request is what we're going to be using to make the API calls. Uh, they do not have, when I say they, I mean Comscope Ruckus does not have a particular package that's just for um, their products like some of the other OEMs do, uh, but they do have a GitHub and inside their GitHub, uh, they, they actually have a lot of pre-written things that you can use or you can't use. Um, so, you know, once you do that, um, if you're interested in more, you could certainly go to the Comscope uh, GitHub. Uh, but let's just go ahead and jump into mine real quick. So I've written three files um, other than the requirements.txt, which I'm going to close. Uh, the first thing that I want to start with is my .env file. 
Okay, my dotty and V file, I've got three entries for the dotty and V, and these are variables that I'm going to pass into my Python code. Uh, and it's just the host. And this is the uh, HTTP address of your virtual smart zone controller, and of course, your login and your password. That's all you really need to get started. Uh, you can put more in here if you want to use more variables, and that's fine. Uh, but for the code that I'm sharing with everybody, those are the only three things that you really need. Uh, closing the env file. Uh, then the next one I'm going to look at is this Ruckus uh, VSM. Um, it's just Ruckus Virtual Smart Zone .py. Uh, and this is the, the code that I wrote to just do a demo and kind of show you how you get into it. Uh, notice I created a class uh, called V Smart Zone underscore APIs. And inside that class, I have five or six methods that I've created. Uh, this first method is VSZ Auth or Virtual Smart Zone uh, Authorization. Uh, this one threw me off a little bit because they don't they talk about tokens and you're going to see if you do uh, much research when you look at Google, it'll actually tell you to go get the token using a forward slash token after your URL, but it doesn't work on all versions. That, that was a change. I've only had version six, so I'm not sure when it changed. So in order to get a token to be able to do something in this version, it's actually called a service ticket. It took me a little while to figure out, so sharing it with you here quickly. So, you know, using the service ticket, when you get that information back, there'll be a dictionary. It's going to return JSON. And in that dictionary, however you call it, there's actually going to be this uh, service, service ticket key. And from that key, whatever the value is, uh, that's going to be what I'm going to call the token. Uh, that's how Ruckus does it. So as you can see here, I'm going to make this call to uh, my virtual smart zone. Uh, when I get it back, I'm just going to call it R for my request, but then I'm going to specifically pull out this token and then return that just for myself so I can do everything else. This is the only call that you can make that's not going to require that token is the login call. Every time afterwards, you're going to have to use the token. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're saving that in your Python code. And I'll show you that in a second. Uh, also, the recommendation from Ruckus is when you're done with that token, when you're done using it, even though it's a temporary token, to go ahead and delete that thing. So we've got a delete token method uh, that you could put at the very, very end of your code just to remove that token. Remember, when you log in, you're using that username or password. Uh, and you're using that 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 particular logins token each time. Uh, so we've got something to delete it. Uh, next thing, if you're familiar with Ruckus, you know Ruckus uses Ruckus zones. Um, this is just a quick little get uh, API call that will return all the API zones for you. Once again, right, we're just kind of getting into it. I'm teaching you how to set up uh, Python and VS Code to connect to Ruckus Virtual Smart Zone. Okay, then we go into Filter Zone. And in, in Filter Zone, is if you just want to get the zone ID for a particular zone, uh, you can pass a variable into it called value. Uh, and that value then, uh, if it's found, will return the zone ID just for that particular zone. If you want all zones, right, that's the get all zones above there. If you just wanted one zone, I just wrote it just to show you how you could filter it if you wanted to. Uh, the next thing is this get zone. So get zone means that you know the zone ID and you're going to pass that along and you're asking for all of the information uh, or a very detailed view of the zone. And then the last one is just the get sessions. Uh, if you're wondering, you know, who's logged in to your virtual smart zone, this get sessions will actually show you all of the logins, you know, with their usernames and everything. Uh, well, not everything, not the password, but the usernames of those current users that are currently logged into the system, just to kind of get you along the way. Okay, so from there, that's the um, the package somewhat that I've created using a class called vSmartZone APIs. Uh, let's actually go to the main file. I didn't want to just call it main, so I called it Ruckus main here. So when I look at Ruckus main, we've got the standard imports, right? So this uh, VSM, is the file that we just went over. So you're going to have to import that, uh, specify the directory, uh, or put it where all the other packages are. Uh, and then I'm importing this vSmartZone APIs. And the first thing I do is I create a variable entry for the SmartZone APIs, and I'm going to call it Ruckus. 
So before I launch any of those smart, any of the class uh, methods that are defined, we just have to put the ruckus before it's all it's doing. So the host login and password here. Uh, if you've seen any of my videos before, you know this is how I secure my variables. I create an env file uh, that I showed you at the very, very beginning. And these are the only three variables that I'm using uh, in this one. I've also created a variable called video lab. That is the name of the zone that I am using inside uh, the Ruckus Virtual Smart Zone. Uh, so to be able to filter that, I just created this variable. You don't need that variable in your code. Um, from here on down, this is all code that we're using to, to contact virtual smart zone. Uh, so the first thing, as you can see, uh, log in and get the needed token for the API calls. So I'm going to call my local variable token and I'm doing the ruckus VZ auth. I'm sending the host login and password. So you'll see that I've got a bunch of things commented out. Uh, like IC token. The reason that I do that is just because, you know, you don't always want those on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that one off. And then I'm going to run the code. And then we'll actually be able to see ice cream in action here. And it's just going to print the token, but it's going to do it very, very uh, quickly. Uh, so I'm going to hit play. I'm going to run it. And there it is. There's my token. Uh, I take that back. Look, I had this one still turned on. So it actually showed all the login sessions. Let me turn that off and rerun that. Okay, so I've got that off. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to clear this information. Let's just bring this up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, so the only thing I should be printing to screen is this uh, uh, using ice cream is the token that I get back. Okay, so I run it and there it is. There's the token. So it still uses tokens in the same way the other uh, OEMs do, but they don't call it a token. And once again, that's what threw me off uh, when we first started out. So as you can see, it was able to log in to my virtual smart zone and was able to retrieve that token. So that's the token every time when I log in. Now I don't I don't need that token now because I'm I'm gonna log I'm gonna log in and use that token again next time I run it. You know, but if you once you save that token and you've got it for the login, you can just keep running. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off printing to that particular token. Okay, and then we're just gonna look at all the zones. So these are get all the zones off the uh, Ruckus virtual smart zone. And I'm going to run that. And here they are. As you can see, there's a bunch of zones. And then, then here's their IDs. So you're going to need a zone ID if you want any information about the zone ID itself. Okay. So let's just clear this out. Now, the filter is not filled, is filtering on something that you send them the way that I set it up. So I'm going to turn off uh, the IC because I don't want everything printed at once. So the zone ID. Uh, at this particular point, it says, I want the zone ID. So we just saw all the zones come out. This one is just going to return the zone ID for a very specific zone. So what I've done is I've created this variable, my zone that identifies a string called Video Lab, and that's the name of the zone that I'm working off of. Uh, so you can see when I send it, I'm just going to send it, I call it to, you know, the, to the filter zone method. Uh, I'm going to send the zones because this was uh, the zones that got returned to me. Uh, which was JSON. Um, I'm going to take that as that variable. It's not JSON yet. Well, it is JSON. And then I'm going to send that through um, and I call that my zone, right? So if I do that and I play this, here it goes. That's the zone ID just for my zone, okay? So if I go and I turn this next one, the one before it on, and I just want to kind of compare it. So first I want to print all the zones and then I want to just print my zone ID. Let's raise this up just a little bit. And here we go. So here's all the zone IDs. As you can see, it, it came back. Uh, it was It's a list of dictionaries. And what I was looking for was my zone, which is called the video. Oh, sorry, there it is right there. So that's my video. As you can see, it ends in 0918 Alpha Charlie and 0198 Alpha Charlie. So it worked. I went and got just the particular zone that I was looking for, uh, which at this point was my zone. So pulling this down, I'm going to turn off printing of those. Uh, those are the two zones. The next thing is the zone data. So now I'm going to take 
the zone data, I'm going to go get the zone data very specific for my zone ID. So notice when I got this, I got my zone ID. So now I can pass that zone ID off and I can find, I can print to the screen using ice cream at this point. And this is going to be a lot of information. So I'm going to make this just a little bit larger and then I'm going to play it. And as you can see, this, there is a, this is everything associated with that particular zone and all the data, uh, which there is a tremendous amount of data uh, inside each of these zones. So I'm typing in the wrong window, just trying to clear this off the screen so it doesn't uh, get in the way. So there's all of our zone data. Uh, then if you want to look at the sessions that have been logged in. Now I've logged in like three times uh, doing it this way. Now typically you you wouldn't just log in and log in and log in, uh, but because this is a tutorial, I want to make sure that I'm showing you that. So now I'm going to look at all the sessions uh, at this particular point. And I'm going to play it. I'm going to raise it. And then here it is. You can see I've logged in a lot here recently, right? And it, it shows up as web GUI because that's your username or password that you're using, right? So you can see it's just all me, right? Logging in, logging in, logging in, logging in. Uh, so this will give you an idea if you want to look and say, hey, is there a bunch of people logging into the system or is there not? But once again, just kind of showing you ways that you can use Python uh, to make all of this happen. I'm going to turn that off. And then the last thing is this delete token. So um, a couple of ways that you can do this is you can actually assign it a variable if you wanted to. Uh, but assigning it a variable is just a response code from the server. So let me show you what I mean. So if I do this delete token here, uh, and then I'm going to uncomment this one, and let's make sure I'm not printing anything else. So when I go here, and you can see response 200 for delete token, which means it successfully deleted the token because it got a response of 200. Typically, you're not going to print response codes out. But what I did want to show you is what you're going to get back. A more likely approach to using this particular command uh, is here, where we would just use ruckus.delete token. We don't need to save the variable. It's not returning anything to us. Uh, so, you know, that would be a more accurate way probably of writing your code uh, than trying to print that out. But it's a nice way to be able to see it. So that's it. That's the intro to Ruckus uh, and using Python and VS Code to do the API calls. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you want to see something specific. Uh, like the video. I really appreciate when you do that. And also subscribe. I know it's, you know, really, 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 you know, uh, nerdy folks are typically watching my videos because I'm pretty nerdy myself. So I do really appreciate all the support. And once again, thank you, Daryl DeRosha, or Double D, uh, for hooking me up with the Virtual Smart Zone to be able to do this. Talk to you all later, nerds.